Sonic knew his next location was Angel Island, but as he approached it, he saw it simply just floating in the ocean. He knew what this meant. The Master Emerald had been taken by Rouge. Sonic quickly ran towards Shrine Isle. There he saw Knuckles with both his hands pushing on his head. Uh, why did Rouge take one of the shards? Why was she even at the shrine again? Uh, Knuckles? Yeah! Knuckles punched Sonic in the gut. Sonic fell onto the soft grass besides the shrine. He strained, getting up. Ah, uh, what the heck, Knuckles? Do I look like I need your help right now, Sonic? This doesn't concern you. What concerns me is that you're getting a little too hot-headed. <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. Rouge has a crush on you. What? No, she doesn't. She's a thief who only wants to steal the Master Emerald, not my heart. Sonic saw Knuckles starting to get embarrassed. Sweat was moving slowly down his dreadlocks. His face started turning red, with his mouth starting to quiver. Knuckles' eyes were also starting to water and shake, in turn making him feel dizzy. Knuckles? You okay? It looks like you're about to faint. I'm fine. I, I just need to... I, I just need to get myself some water. I, I have a water bottle back here somewhere. Knuckles grabs a metal water bottle from behind the cracked Master Emerald. He quickly opens the cap and chugs it all down. Knuckles finishes with a loud yell. You sure you're okay, Knuckles? I don't know, Sonic. I've been really stressed out lately, and Roos just had to make it worse. For multiple reasons. Not just one. Are you going to do anything to get rid of the stress? Like what? Except Rouge has a crush on me and just forgive her for the things she's done to me recently? No way. She stole a piece of the Master Emerald! She did so by kissing me out of the blue! What? I thought you knew this by now. I saw Amy with Rouge. She must have told you. Knuckles was correct about Sonic's knowledge on the situation. Sonic just wanted to keep it subtle. Sonic let out a nose sigh, looking away from Knuckles as he did. He looked back at him and then sat next to the Master Emerald, seeing it cracked with a piece missing. I've had a lot of people tell me things today, Knuckles. Amy's was just the beginning of an ending, meaning she was only a continuation of an already long enough story. Oh. I didn't know. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. I already had enough people do that to me as well today. Why are they apologizing? Did you do something to make them apologize? My entire plan for today was to ask everyone what they did for Valentine's Day, but instead I get into all of this unwanted drama. Well, I'm not making it any better for you. You should probably stop while you're ahead. It's too late, Knuckles. I wanted to see how you were doing after what Amy told me, and now your problem is becoming my problem. Oh no, it isn't. It's my problem, and mine alone. I'm not getting my best friend into this mess with me. My mess just became your mess. I'd say we're pretty even here, Knuckles. Ugh. Fine. Sonic walked up to Knuckles and gave him a hug. Knuckles let out a surprised yell, but later gave in to the hug. Thanks for understanding me, Knuckles. Don't get too emotional, Sonic. We still need to get the stolen piece of the Master Emerald back. So, what's the plan? We go after Rouge. That's it? Doesn't Rouge set up some obstacles so it makes it harder for you? The only obstacle is her. One fight with her, and the Master Emerald is whole. That doesn't seem like Rouge. Rouge would definitely want more than just a fight. Wait a second. What? Because she has a crush on you, she's making it easier for you. You're falling for another one of her tricks. No, I'm not. She's always been like this. Shadow would say the same thing if he was here. I beg to differ. Change of plans, Nux. I'm going to see Shadow. See ya! Sonic ran away with Knuckles closely following from behind, but it wasn't until Sonic made it towards the shore and started running across it that Knuckles came to a halt. Sonic chuckled as Knuckles was getting farther and farther away from his field of view. Knuckles started punching the sand in anger. Sonic continued running back towards Green Hills, but while in the water he saw a flash of blue light in the distance. It was Shadow, to his surprise. He quickly stopped, accidentally getting wet sand all over Shadow. And here I thought I made the messy entrances. Great to see you too, Shadow. What do you want, Faker? First off, you're the Faker. Second, what are you doing here? My question still stands. I want to know what you're doing here. That doesn't concern you. I feel like it should. 
Tough luck, Sonic. Oh, really? That explained to me the total coincidence that is me wanting to talk to you about Rouge definitely wanting more than just a fight. Shadow looked at Sonic with a, are you serious, type of look. Sonic looked at Shadow with a, yeah, I'm serious, type of look. Shadow then gave out a small chuckle that resulted in a small smile. Rouge definitely wants more than just a fight. Who gave you the wrong idea? Knuckles. He thinks all Rouge wants is a fight. They call him Knuckles because he's a knucklehead. Of course he would think that. Could it be because of how much Rouge admires Knuckles? Even so, it's still weird that she would do that. Rouge does a lot of things that are weird. I've gotten my fair share of admiration from Rouge, but it's never like Knuckles' experiences. Oh, that's right. Rouge also has a crush on you. It's nothing like that for me. She's known me longer than Knuckles. She knows what I want. So what? It depends on the person she likes? No. It depends on what the opponent wants, and Rouge doesn't know what Knuckles wants. So she settles on only having a fight. Precisely. With no other options, she settles on the easier route. Sonic felt like he had just finished running a marathon, but without the heavier intense breathing at the end. His confusion was finally gone. He sat down on the dry sand and listened to the water as it came close to the tip of his shoes. Shadow took a kneel and looked at Sonic. Sonic looked back at Shadow and smiled. <sighs> Easier route, huh? You don't understand. Typical. No, I do. It's just foolish how you phrase it. It's foolish how you think that. I've experienced things that can only be described as routes. You could have just said she settles on the easy way. You didn't have to get all fancy with your words. Shows how simple-minded you really are. <laughs> Thanks, Shadow. Don't mention it. Why? Afraid it'll ruin your reputation? No, I'm not afraid of anything. Of course you're not. You are the ultimate life form, after all. Sonic and Shadow both laughed, but neither of them knew why. Probably because they have been rivals for so long, they never took the time to have a somewhat normal conversation. After they were both done laughing, Shadow stood up and put his hand out for Sonic to grab. Sonic grabbed Shadow's hand as he got up from the dry sand, throwing a little bit of sand in Shadow's face. Shadow laughed it off, and Sonic looked out towards Angel Island. What's on your mind, Faker? Not sure. Maybe it's just guilt that I got from leaving Knuckles. He should know about this, Shadow. If he knew he would be in denial, and the only thing he would want to do then is have a fight with Rouge, he wouldn't care about the missing shard, or anything else. Wait, how do you know about the missing shard? Espio contacted me about seeing Rouge fly over the office with the shard. That's why I'm here, Sonic. I wanted to go to Angel Island, but wanted to see what had become of it after Rouge stole the shard. So... I just happened to catch you at the perfect time, then? Correct. How about this, Shadow? I go to Espio and ask him about the shard, while you go to Knuckles and tell him about all of this. I'm going to see Knuckles and tell him about the shard, not about Rouge. You are not going to Espio. Sonic looked at Shadow with a smirk before he ran off in a blue blur. Shadow was rightfully mad at Sonic for not listening to his words, but Shadow proceeded to chaos control towards his next destination which would be Angel Island. Sonic ran until he made it to the entrance of the Chaotix Detective Agency. There he saw Espio through the window asleep on the front desk. He slowly opened the door, trying his best not to wake him up. All he could hear was Espio snoring. It was loud. Espio? Espio. Espio! Is it business or personal? Uh, personal? Ah, Sonic! What's the problem? You contacted Shadow about seeing Rouge fly over the office with the shard. That's why I'm here. Ah, that's right. Shadow should be coming here with Knuckles any minute. Guess you just beat them to it. Sonic almost wanted to run away when he heard that Shadow would be coming with Knuckles, but he quickly ran into another room with Espio and locked the door. Espio started to get nervous. Espio? Why is Shadow coming here with Knuckles? So I can tell them where Rouge took the shard. This shouldn't concern you, Sonic. Blame Shadow. He got me into this mess. I also got into Knuckles' mess. What? Keep your voice down. Like you said, 
They should be coming here any minute. You should be getting out of here if you don't want to be seen. They'll be expecting me at the front desk. Tell me where Rouge took the shard and I'll be out of here before they enter. Absolutely not. The only people that are supposed to know Rouge and the shard's whereabouts are Shadow and Knuckles. Not you, Sonic. They might not even want Rouge's whereabouts anymore because they're probably after me. That's your fault. You're not getting the whereabouts just because you're number one in their wanted list. Sonic then got an idea, a somewhat genius idea. Since he's quote unquote number one on the wanted list, that means Rouge is probably number two. So knowing her whereabouts would put him in the same place as Rouge, a two and one. But they could be going after me and Rouge if I knew where she was hiding. And you don't have to be nervous about anything anymore. <sighs> Once again, you are not going after Rouge. And I'm not nervous. I'm about to lose it because of you. Where's Vector and Charmy? They probably know about this as well. They're unavailable. And they know nothing about this. Can't you at least tell me what they're up to? It feels good to have a little bit of insight. <sighs> Vector went out yesterday to get chocolates from Miss Vanilla for Valentine's Day. But Charmy ate all of them once he bought them, so... Vector had to take care of Charmy's sugar rush, terminating his plans for getting dinner with Miss Vanilla. So now, Vector is spending all of today with Miss Vanilla while Charmy is being babysat by Big. Happy? I am now. How did you find that? It was literally right next to where you were sleeping. <sighs> Great. Now you know where Rouge is. I hope you're happy with yourself, Sonic. Espio unlocked the door and walked outside back towards the front desk. Sonic felt the same guilt when he left Knuckles. But then he realized something. He had felt guilt for everyone he came across. Tails, Blaze, Wave, Silver, Amy, Shadow, and now Espio. Espio, wait. Go away, Sonic. I'm tired of going away. It's not going to change anything for me. <laughs> How so? If I go away, I'm going to come across more people that I'm going to spontaneously start drama with. It's not going to stop until I do something about all of it. And I don't know what I'm going to do. At this point, Rouge is my last hope for forgiveness. Rouge does give some good advice. But don't expect whatever she gives you to guide you all throughout your life. I'm not counting on it. I just want her to help me with today. Look, I, I'm sorry, Sonic. I, I didn't mean for- I didn't mean for any of this. I understand, Espio. Is it that bad? Depends on how you view it. See ya, Espio. The Ultimate Showdown. Knuckles and Shadow won't be coming for a while. After all of Sonic's stressful encounters with everyone, he finally reached what is hopefully the end of it all. Sonic goes to find Rouge at Emerald Coast. He sees her laying on her front on a blanket with an umbrella by her side. Next to it, he saw the missing shard and a giant cooler with some food and drinks. Rouge turns her head to see Sonic, walking in a slow manner. Oh, hey Big Blue. Hey, Rouge. I need some advice. What's the matter, honey? I've started drama with almost everyone I've come across today, and you're my last hope for forgiveness. Hmm. Sounds like you got yourself into a rut. I'll try to help out the best I can. Take a seat. Oh, uh, okay. Want something to drink? Do you have water? I sure do. I'll have that. Rouge grabbed a bottle of water out of her giant cooler and handed it to Sonic. She then grabbed herself a bottle of root beer. Sonic saw that she had enough food and drinks for about 10 people, but he was more focused on the shard right next to the giant cooler. Rouge saw this and as she took a sip of her drink, she stood up and walked to Sonic. Uh, the shard shouldn't concern you, Big Blue. Either Knuckles or Shadow will come here wanting it back eventually. How did you know that I wasn't coming here to take it back? Your eyes were focused on me, not the shard. You needed my help as soon as you got here. You didn't even think once about it. Congratulations! You figured out the entire reason for why I'm here. Huh. <laughs> you ran away from everyone so you could find me. Think about that while you can. I'm tired of thinking, Rouge. I know what today has been like for me. I don't need to think any further about it. That's what you think. How do I not get tired of thinking? 
keep things to yourself. <laughs> like I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it doesn't seem like to me that you've done a great job in doing so. Sonic looked at Rouge, surprised at how she was able to figure out so much without even speaking a word. He quickly chugged down his bottle of water as fast as he could. Once he was done, he got up and ran around the island in a disgruntled manner, coming to a stop once he did a full lap around the perimeter. Rouge sat down and took a sip. <sighs> what else do you know? Hmm, not much. I just know a stressed out hedgehog when I see one. Looks can say a lot about someone's day. Oh really? So you're living in the lap of luxury all because you- Rouge put her hand up, signaling Sonic to stop talking. She took another sip of her drink, putting it down near the shard. She walked up to Sonic and made him look out towards the horizon of the coast. This is a place I go to, so I can escape the horrors of the world. Before they come after me. Gives me time and space to think. What am I going to do, Rouge? The day is almost over. I'm not going to get everyone to forgive me in time. Who do you need forgiveness from? Do you have a pen and paper? I think I might have a small notepad in here somewhere. Wait, what? Sonic was surprised as he saw Rouge go back to her giant cooler and pull out a small notepad. Rouge handed Sonic the notepad along with a pen that had been hooked onto the cover. He started writing down multiple names on the inside of the notepad. Rouge read the page after Sonic was done. Oh my, sounds like you got yourself into a real rut. Hmm, there's only one idea I have that might help. I'll do anything. Please, just tell me. <laughs> Calm down, Sonic. You're going to be okay. My idea is for you to throw an apology party. An apology party? Mm-hmm. We can set up food and drinks for everyone. And if they seem calm about it all, then you can apologize. I don't know. It, it is a good idea. You already have everything we would need. But I'm not sure about the whole calm part. You're not alone, honey. I'll help you, but just this once. Later on, you'll need to learn how to do this all on your own. Be my guide in this situation. What do you mean? Guide me on what to do or say. You'll still be helping me, but I'll try to do most of it on my own. Rouge solemnly agreed to Sonic with a nod, but Sonic didn't know where to go from there. He thought about how he's going to get everyone to come to the party. He was stumped, but then he felt his wrist heating up. He looked under the cuff of his glove to see his wristwatch. That was it. He could send everyone a message telling them to come to Emerald Coast. He did so as quickly as possible. Tails was the first to show up. Sonic? What is all this? I just felt a lot of guilt after today. I wanted to make it up to you and everyone else coming. Who else is coming? Good evening, Sonic. Hi, Blaze. Uh, you look nervous. You'll see why in a minute. Bad luck, Speedy. Hopefully, this is the last of it. Mm, you'll be alright. Rouge saw how Sonic was talking to everyone as they arrived. Sonic looked at her as she gave him a thumbs up. The next to arrive was Silver. Hi, guys. Hey, Silver. Sonic, I'm here. Are you okay? Sonic quickly ran towards Amy to give her a big hug, startling Silver that he backed up into Blaze. Silver and Blaze stared at each other for a second or two before they looked back at Sonic and Amy. As Sonic finished hugging Amy, he grabbed her hand as he looked out into the distance to see Knuckles, Shadow, and Espio. Let's hope so. Let me at him! No, he's mine! Stop it, both of you! I want to apologize to all of you. Everyone was quiet. Sonic now had the floor. He took a deep breath in. All I wanted to do today was ask my friends a question, but I wasn't using my head. That question led you all here, and I'm sorry for all the troubles I put you through. You don't have to forgive me. What? No! You need them to forgive you! I forgive you, Sonic. It's bad knowing that you're going through all this, but it's good knowing that you're persevering. He makes a good point. Perseverance is a common thing Sonic goes through almost each and every time he's on an adventure. We take it for granted. Communication isn't Sonic's greatest ability, but perseverance will always be his key. He communicates just as good as the rest of us. 
We take that for granted. She's right. We're all the same when it comes to communicating. You just need to know where you're coming from. You made multiple mistakes that we all end up forgiving you for. We wouldn't have been on amazing adventures if it wasn't for you. We care about you enough that we all came and listened to your apology. You're our friend, Sonic. And <laughs> we all love you. But in a bro way, not, you know, I love you as a bro. Tails walked up to Sonic and gave him a hug, followed by Blaze and Silver. Wave scoffed and also joined in. Amy kissed Sonic on the cheek as she also joined in. Knuckles and Espio were next to the group hug, with Rouge having to push Shadow into doing so. They were all in a group hug. Sonic shed one last tear as he closed his eyes and smiled. Thank you for the adventure, everyone. It's no problem. We're happy to be a part of this adventure with you. You don't have to worry about a thing. We're meant for each other. Together, we're family. And family sticks together. Not in a literal sort of way. But still together, nonetheless. Happy Valentine's Day, Big Blue. Once the hug was over, Sonic walked over to Rouge's giant cooler and started taking some food and drinks out. Tails brought out the same foldable table he and Sonic had coffee on a couple hours prior. Sonic placed down clumps of beverages and snacks that Espio and Wave helped set out on the table. Amy walked up to Sonic and kissed him on the cheek again, holding his hand after she was done. Knuckles and Shadow started grabbing food off the table looking at each other menacingly, but Rouge came around and knocked them off guard as she kissed both of them on the cheek, and Silver slowly put his arms around Blaze giving her a hug. He then grabbed both of her hands and gave her a kiss on the cheek. Blaze's face turned red, but in a good way. They walked out towards the water and looked at the setting sun. Sonic and Amy walked towards the water as well, watching the sun set beyond the horizon. Knuckles, Shadow, and Rouge followed behind, then Tails, Wave, and Espio. The party started when the sun disappeared. The end. Jamenda.com. Jamenda.com.